The narcissist corrupts. Positivity. Positivity. Positive outlook. Optimism. The empathic individual, which is the target for our kind, is blessed with positivity. Positivity originates from the empathic traits of compassion, caring, and decency. It is an amalgam of those three things. The ingrained positivity of the empath allows them to see the good in people. It enables them to find the silver lining in the gathered storm clouds and grants a motivating factor to them. By adopting a positive outlook in their life, the empathic individual is inspired to achieve more, to dispel the bad and seize on whatever goodness they can identify, even if it is the merest kernel. This trait enables the empathic individual to cast their optimistic eyes over the bleakest of scenarios and see that there is something good which can be learned from the experience, something decent which is in the pipeline, and something to be cherished. In its purest form, it manifests as a blind optimism, and this powers the empathic individual so that they are able to overcome that which might be regarded as insurmountable by lesser individuals. Yet, in other instances, this blind optimism takes them into troubled lands when we come along. This empathic trait causes the relevant person to reflect on what they have learned from an experience, how the occasion was good for them in testing them, causing them to utilise their resources and to work out a way forward when faced with the problem. Whilst a normal individual might bemoan the situation that has befallen them, and indeed our kind would address it by blaming everybody else and leaving them to pick up the pieces, the empathic individual's innate positivity causes them to see an opportunity. This is particularly prevalent with those empaths that have significant percentages of the carrier cadre. These individuals see the chance to enrich their own experience, to grow as a person, and to demonstrate that with positive thought, positive action, positive attitude, that no problem is too great, no issue is incapable of resolution, and no setback is forever. This, of course, is joyous news to the narcissist, because such positivity causes the empath when faced with elevated emotional thinking, to believe that the problem of the narcissist can be resolved, that the issues created by the narcissist are ones that are capable of being sorted out, and that the setbacks experienced by the narcissist's behaviour are ones that can be overcome. Certainly, you can recover from the experience of entanglement with us by going no contact and remaining away from us but you cannot overcome the setback by continuing to interact with us. You cannot resolve matters with us by continuing to argue with us. And you cannot surmount the problem where you continue to interact with the narcissist for reasons that have been set out in other videos. You cannot control that which is designed not to be controlled. Whilst being imbued with this sense of positivity allows an empathic individual to demonstrate fortitude, pragmatism and optimism in their lives and thus they bring with them the capacity to enrich the lives of others, the trait of positivity also generates problems when dealing with us, the narcissists. The positivity invariably blinds the empathic person to what they are actually dealing with. The false positivity, which we radiated through our love bombing in the golden period, convinces the empathic person that we are indeed a good person. And this is especially so where you're dealing with mid-range and greater narcissists. Accordingly, when the monster appears during devaluation, rather than see it for what it is, the manipulations and machinations of an abusive person, the positive empath strives to harness the good which once existed and bring it back again. This creates a spirit which in turn causes the empathic person to remain in our grip for far longer than they ought to have done. Naturally, this is of no concern to us, since we want you to remain on our grip, we want you bound to us, and your unrelenting belief that the goodness that you have seen can be brought to the fore again is a weakness of this positivity, and invariably puts you at risk. When others without it would retreat in the face of the eroding and savage manipulations, the empathic individual remains positive. Not only do they wish to sweep away the darkness and find the good that they believe exists in us once again, they regard it as a test of their resolve and therefore increase their positive outlook in order to cater and deal with the slings and arrows which are sent their way. 
This positivity, corrupted by elevated emotional thinking, leads to the making of excuses. Rather than realize that you have been entangled by a deceitful, manipulative abuser, you look to environmental factors, such as the fact that we are tired, stressed, or overworked, since that must be what is clouding our innate and once seen inner goodness. If those external factors continue to fail to explain our behaviors, then you become introspective and reflective and consider that the problem has arisen as a consequence of some failing on your part. You consider that you have not shown us enough love, not asked us how our day has gone, not been supportive enough when we faced a challenge, not cooked our steak correctly, and the ever more trivial and meaningless excuses which are trotted out in order to maintain a positive outlook and not give in. By adopting positivity, the empathic individual places stock in the fact that with the right effort and application, things will be worked out and once more will be good again. Your emotional thinking corrupts your empathic trait of positivity because of your continued involvement with us to keep you in the loop, to keep you subjected to our behaviours and thus, because you are continuing to interact with us, you keep your emotional thinking high. When a respite period is granted by us during the devaluation, the empathic individual will seize on this as evidence of how their positive outlook has reaped rewards. You have prevailed. By hanging in there, never giving up, and remaining upbeat, they have allowed their positive to shine through, and this has saved the day. Once again, however, this dedication to remaining positive has caused the empathic person to fail to notice that this is all part of an ongoing manipulation, and this is just a brief and passing restoration of the illusion that is the golden period, and this is done further by exploiting your positivity. Positivity causes the empath to misguidedly believe that we can be fixed and healed. This positive outlook means that when an objective third party points out the reality of the situation to the empath, they smile and thank them for their observation, but find an excuse and point out how remaining true to being positive will once again resolve the issues. This self-flagellation, this failure to see what is before you, blinded by the positivity corrupted by your emotional thinking, only works against you. The viewpoint is one of if you want something enough, then the universe will provide it to you. And those with a positive outlook do not waste time wondering why things do not happen as they wish, but rather they do something to try and bring about what they want and to change things. This attitude might be appropriate to trying to secure a promotion at work, saving to purchase your dream home, or being thought of as a kind person by your friends. But it doesn't work with us. It only serves to blind you to what you've been entangled with when it comes to our kind. The corruption of your positivity means you are enmeshed with us for longer than you ought to be. It means you suffer the sustained devaluation and all of its awful outcomes to a greater degree than you ought to have done. It means that you remain highly susceptible to being hoovered post-disengagement because you believe that we will ultimately see the error of our ways and that we will recognise that we have done wrong so that we return to the wonderful, loving and charming person that once seduced you. Those with this empathic trait, driven by compassion, caring and decency, don't countenance the manifestation of negativity. They fight down the narcissistic trait of anger and replace it with concern. They dissolve their frustration and exhibit caring instead. The sublimation of emotions only serves to encourage our devaluation as we strive to shatter the positivity and bring forth the tears, the hurt and the despair. Your rejection of negativity means you will not hear ill-spoken of us. You will not blame us for what we have done. And rather than take heed of the negative thoughts which will and do manifest in your mind, you try to force them to one side by engaging your trait of positivity. This is a dangerous path to tread. Not only does it blind you to what we are and bind you to us for longer, it means that ultimately you are setting yourself up for devastating disappointment. When the full force of our machinations have been unleashed against you and your considerable coping abilities have been stretched beyond endurance, once all this comes crashing down, the height from which you maintained your positivity means that your fall is all the harder, longer and more painful. When that disengagement takes you by surprise, you plummet from your perch of positivity and crash into the dirt, bewildered, exhausted and drained. 
Yet, it does not take long for this positive trait to reappear, as you soon begin to apply it again, making excuses for why we disappeared, making plans for how matters can be resolved if we just sit down and have a constructive conversation together, and how it was good for you to experience this despair, because now you know more than you once did, and you can apply this learned experience to your and our advantage by winning us back and helping us with our problems. You can tease out that inner goodness, because you will not allow yourself to think it does not exist. To do so offends your sense of positivity. Negative thoughts, however, can serve a positive purpose for you, if only you would listen to them. Negative thoughts such as fear manifest to tell you to protect yourself, to defend yourself, and to get away from the danger. You, however, remain in the firing line, because you reject the negative and embrace the positive. A negative thought, such as feeling unappreciated, lonely or hurt, should be recognised as a warning and acted upon. However, the corruption of your positivity will invariably override this until it's too late. Indeed, there are those whose degree of positivity is so great that they will have become deluded as to what we are and how dangerous we are to you. They are blinded, and no matter how often we dole out our cruel treatments, no matter how often others point out the harm that is being caused, they cannot see it because of the effect of their innate positivity. To do so is indeed a problem in the context of being ensnared with our kind. The positivity which you should embrace ought to be applied to yourself, that your encounter with us should cause you to learn what we are and how to avoid and evade us in the future. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.